Well, if this looks familiar, it's because it's as far as I got before I quit yesterday. I got some coffee here. I've given myself 30 minutes of Pomodoro, Pomodoro kind of thinking. We'll see how far along I bring it today. I really, I've only got one big thing to do here. I've got one more big setting thing to do. That should draw up easily enough. Uh, I This thing right here is kind of blobby. I think I'll turn the brush I was using into clear. Break that up a little bit. you got to watch it when you... Uh, when you're uh, doing something like uh, using black, because that's what the eye is drawn to, is this corner over here, the thing I want everybody looking at. It frames, it's a framing device of sorts, but and that's what I intended it for. But is it, let's see, uh, now that I've started on it, it's like, how much of this do I want? Got to be just want to put everything in front that belongs in front, put everything in back that belongs in back. That's all draftsmanship is. Draftsmanship. I took a little, uh, course on it a little uh, one of these little things that I guess it's a way to good way to make money one of those little uh, extension courses that where you you're meeting in like a uh, wherever someone is rented to uh, have people come in and meet and the instructor was a really good instructor that instructed at uh, Cal State Fullerton quite a bit has some great stuff on anatomy. I took a lecture on his uh, anatomy as well. His name's Marshall Vandruff. He's gotten he's gotten rave reviews uh, all the way from you know a lot of people like uh, a, a guy named Sweet. He's a good digital painter. I think his name's Matthew. Uh, and all the way to like like I think even. Uh, Bernie Wrightson, as good as he knows anatomy, he gave him a blurb for what he felt he added to his knowledge of what he was up to when he drew the figure. So, I mean, that's that's pretty high praise. So, uh, so Vandruff was teaching a little, one of these little micro courses on draftsmanship. And it was a pretty cool little course, and I never it uh, made it clear to me that draftsmanship is that thing that's going on when you uh, can wrap a rubber band around all your volumes and you have a uh, uh, an inkling of how something turns. For instance, this pillow. If I, if I turned it into stripes, of course you'd know everything about every turn in it because the contours of it you would see how the stripes went in it but if I leave it at that and turn it into a lost line leaning there you still understand that that part of the pillow is behind that part of the pillow and that's what uh, draftsmanship is is the uh, ability with the vocabulary of line to uh, say what's in front what's in back and do it, you know, hopefully in a pleasing way. And Vandruff's, uh, his big, you know, if he had a, uh, a person I know that could definitely be called his, somebody he was just really passionate about and wished he, he, he could be the same way I wish I was Frazetta or something. Um, and I, I, that, that box me more and more as I think about it in my life. <laughs> it's like I, I never got close to being Frazetta. Uh, but but Vandruff, I mean, you know, this may mock him too. But he 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 was crazy about uh, the artist that did Little Nemo, and of course you can't find a better example of draftsmanship than Windsor McKay. 
He is just a guy that uh, does it so simply, yet you understand all those volumes that you're looking at in that comic strip, and it just, you know, it's eye candy. It's, it's just, all of it was eye candy. And, you know, that was a, I don't know if it was a daily, I don't think it was ever a daily, was it? I think it was always uh, the deluxe Sunday strip. Anyway, it was, uh, you know, those those kind of people. Teaching is weird, as, as political as everybody may be on a campus. The, the, the fact that teachers are there and really would like to take what's in their head and give it to somebody else it's it's a cool impulse that I think uh, it's hard to underrate uh, when it comes to what it amounts to. It's, it's a generosity that only exists because we are kind of good. I mean, we are people that want to be good. Now, we flub up and we let things get in our way in terms of like uh, some sort of overarching belief that will not let me like this guy or that guy and I, <laughs> I'm the world's worst defender there's certain people that you if you tell me you're uh, you're a big advocate of and I'd say what what the, what the heck is wrong with you and uh, you know that'd be my uh, that'd be my bias I couldn't help it, it uh, there's certain kinds of stupid that uh, I, I really have a hard time warming up to. And that, that's it. You know, you, you have something that is as painful as cognitive dis dissonance. It, it exists. You can't believe that someone else's brain has stored information, you know, well, you're, you're, you suspect their information. You, you are suspect or you are suspicious that their information, they just haven't taken it in right, if they believe what they believe. You need, you need to have a flame war with them. You need to send them a bunch of articles. You need to straighten them out. So anyway, that goes on. It goes on with everything. Uh, but I always, you know, my cognitive dissonance is, I feel like most of these people that I'm really kind of passionate about, I wish would just curl up and die in terms of like their impact on our society is the ones that I, I feel like are knowing participants in a, uh, uh, you know, that they know exactly what they're doing, that they're canny. And so that sort of personality, which I feel like covers an awful lot of the, uh, lefty kind of thinking that they they feel like they're not ever obligated to be straight with anybody because that would just be strategically stupid why would you ever tell anybody what's actually on your mind and omit this and that and uh, you know I mean just very and narrative of course becomes the word at that point you go oh so you're crafting a narrative I see and uh, that, those sort of, uh, yeah, it looks slightly better. Okay, we can, let's turn that off for a second. Just draw based on what I see here. I'm going to go with Doug's recommendation on dialing back my blue a little bit. That'll probably help drag this white down below it. Make it blue, I've locked it. That was probably a good idea. Yeah, make that real faint. Come down another 30% and then lock it. We'll see how much of this I get done. I've got 21 minutes and my coffee's getting cold. So anyway, now let's move on to this other one. I'll get some more done on that maybe. I think I got a perspective issue up there. <laughs> I've got a lot of perspective issues. This is me dropping a like a bounding box of the mind into a scene 
and you know it's got it's got issues but it's since it's all the same since I did all of it it's <laughs> it is that consistent I gotta see if I can I don't like that and this is calligraphy or uh, calligraphy is another word that gets my may might get bandied about if you're talking about uh, uh, you know draftsmanship hmm why I don't have oh I see because it's locked can't use clear if it's on a locked layer there we go let's see if I can bring the line weight down of this been nice if I'd noticed it when I did it that way I could have hit undo just done it over again digital digital is so glorious I had this one guy know that uh, guy he hates everything that makes things easier for what he feels like is the competition <laughs> and you know I mean you got to understand the competition is everybody and yet you know I mean creative people are pretty generous with saying hey that's that's pretty good tell you what they aren't terribly generous about uh, when someone gets on to uh, money making and they're into you know making sure that the freelance is flowing they'll, they'll snipe from you they'll, they'll go ahead and grab this or that that you thought you had <laughs> some sort of handle on, you know, some sort of relation going with somebody else, they'll just move right on in and say, hey, I'd, I'd like to be doing that. That's just, that's life, though. I mean, you almost can't help yourself on uh, thinking that way when you uh, run across uh, someone that's got something going. Right now, of course, this, this YouTube stuff is uh, all about saying, hey, my brand, come to my brand. Well, it's like those, uh, it's like the effect of the, uh, the comic book stores look at that crowded shelf try to find somebody that wants to take your stuff it's almost as hard as finding somebody that wants to read a script you know I mean it's it's that's hard work finding somebody that's actually going to be interested in your uh, your creative efforts unless you just uh, you achieve something that makes people just want to bow down to you says wow this guy that's, this guy's got the goods and uh, you know give me more of this and I get that way about certain people I I don't you know it's kind of weird and it's probably because I get it for free uh, I'm a great big fan of Ben Caldwell who had who has a great how-to book that is just basically all about appeal and and stitching together figures that are uh, economical and fun to look at and uh, so I recommend those books I forget what they're called but just look up Ben Caldwell on Amazon his shtick seems to always be just like uh, doing a the discipline of uh, daily doodles is one way he always makes money I may step off and buy one of those someday <laughs> considering how much free stuff I've gotten from him which is all of his uh, those daily doodles every time he posts one I, I right click save it so I guess I owe him uh, some actual money someday but he's great and uh, that that kind of uh, again trying to I guess you call it playing it before this is supposed to have a, a, a residue of like indicate that someone's head probably laid here and I'll have to do it with like uh, color I suppose that uh, because someone's head was here that it's the least dusty spot of the uh, of the pillowcase we'll see what I do with color there I've got to move on here I've got 15 minutes if I'm if I'm digging it all I'll, I'll go I'll set the stopwatch up again Okay, let's start drawing down here. Let's draw this little brat first. Do do do. Q 
kids. Never had one. I can only imagine how much in love I'd be if I ever had a kid, because I was pretty uh, totally in love with a little nephew one time, and I kind of realized what that would do to you emotionally to have someone that you love so much. Whew! I don't, I don't think I'm, I was ever set up for it. Just be uh, a little too hard to live with, knowing that they were out there and that. If I wasn't paying uh, proper attention to them, something would go wrong. I don't know. But some people, thankfully, are built different than that. They're tougher stuff. My parents, I guess, they weren't particularly... <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to get into my what my parents were like. We'll get some... I uh, Get some uh, feedback that comes to me from family. <laughs> I was thinking about my mom this morning. She's only been dead a couple of years now. And I used to write her column for her that would appear. Again, he's too old. Got to got to youth him up a little bit. Kids ready to take a shotgun out and hunt for the family. That was one of my dad's tales, that they were so poor that they, uh, they had an inventory of uh, ammo they could go out with, and if they didn't bring it back a squirrel for, you know, a cartridge, that was, they had to stay out until they'd killed it with a rock. That may be creative on my dad's part, but uh, they were poor. And mom was uh, poor as well. It, it was it was interesting, you know. I mean, if there's something I could recommend, it would be uh, be the stenographer of a uh, of a parent's reminiscences. But of course, what I was going to say is that uh, her notions of her her personality and stuff that she would. Uh, share uh, makes him look sad don't want that makes him look a little stunned <laughs> I'll work it out there we go maybe still too old babies are hard there we go that helped Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, well yeah, I mean, you, when you're uh, typing up what your parent remembers about when they're a child and when they grew up and all that, yeah, teaches you about them and it's kind of fun to know stuff you didn't know. Makes you feel like you've completed some sort of study you didn't know you need to make. But her opinions of her, her personality, and it, you know, it'd be the same thing if I started writing about myself. Uh, she she had herself portrayed as just the world's uh, number one non-complainer. <laughs> Makes me laugh to even think about it. Um, you know, she'd say, oh, and we never complained. I thought, wow, it'd been nice for that, that it held over in terms of a trait. But <laughs> I think she still thought of herself as uh, someone that just she was a stoic. Didn't complain about things. Huh? That was really kind of a almost a style. <laughs> was making sure everybody knew that she had a, a complaint to register about it, just about everything. There's your gruel, kid. Okay. Still play with that age on that. It's tough. It's about the only. Oops. I've got what? Ten minutes? Yeah. Now I'm not, now I'm acting like that's a rule. That, that once I hit that mark, I'm done. 
as you can see not much is going to get done on this today if I treat I'll be back how about that no I said that yesterday and kids would probably have their little flippers in the air wouldn't be tucked away under the table still too old oh well he's a baby-ish And the only thing, uh, the other thing in draftsmanship is like, make it pop. Uh, like this contrivance here, it's like uh, there may be something that should go over here. And I just want to see if it bugs me that it's there. It doesn't bug me. But if it bugged me, leave it out. You know, I mean, it, there's, there are no rules when it comes to, uh, <clears throat> What you ought to treat almost every bit of this thing as is like a, if it was on a, a stage and if it was a window that was floating on a wire and it's positioned where it's at strictly for for the visual of it in the same way with anybody that's a uh, that would be working on doing lighting in a film or whatever you know you you don't worry about creating an entire universe that is consistent from uh, you know in every direction it's a uh, it's a matter of like from shot to shot does it all does it all start to work nah, don't like any of that I'm getting a little too casual here a lot of undoes that's good I'll just stick with figures they'll be the tough parts and I said I was going to do this next one on a different layer and didn't do it well we'll make her just a little Not sad. It's a young couple. They've still got all their vitality. The prairie hasn't beaten the life out of them yet. Feature placement. That's the thing. That's another thing about what I'm up to here. This is inking. If I forget uh, being able to do this with, if I was having to pencil the kind of stuff you see in the blue, forget that. I yeah, I can't do it. That requires the brain to become that either left or right. I forget which. Uh, it becomes the art brain. And this is not really the art brain. This is the uh, this is the janitor brain. This is a, I mean, it requires this and that, but it's 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 the uh, it's the day laborer brain compared to the uh, to the brain that has to uh, invent. Even though, you know, as I go along, I realize, oh, that's awful. You know, I need to I need to invent again. It's part of this problem. I'm drawing right over the top of stuff that probably needed to be worked out better. Five minutes. We're off to a walk. Too big, her head's too big. Let's try that. See what I like that better. Good 
just start over again. I may end up on a, uh, a uh, oops, I don't want to do that. I may end up on a drawn and quartered tonight on Blacklist Universe channel. We'll see. We're going to draw someone I'm totally unfamiliar with, some uh, the guy that typically moderates it, Edwin Boyette, is going to uh, have one of his favorites on. Apparently there was a pre-Captain Marvel character, a black woman, that uh, he liked a lot, and uh, he, uh, you know what? Let's see what was under there. Let's see if we can do better. Let's work out. Oh, I like that a lot better. <laughs> we'll draw back to her. Jeez, how'd that go so wrong? We'll just draw her uh, figure. See if by the time we get up to her head, if I can draw it better. Just the whole digital demand of this not being a sheet of paper that I can scoot as easily as I... Well, I mean, hitting that R button, rotating it to where the stroke is fun to make versus uh, kind of a chore to make. That's, a, that's the way you get around it, I guess. And, you know, not being lazy. Saying, I need to rotate. If I want that to be a good stroke. Like, for instance, I'm doing the edit on uh, my reference. She has a uh, very floral dress on for the reference, but not getting into that. She's going to have a light side and a dark side. And if there's any sort of decorative thing going on with her, I'll, it will be very minimal. And again, I'm, 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 yeah, it looks awful. I'm feeling my way on this whole idea of sharing this kind of stuff as a streaming piece of entertainment or infomercial for myself. We'll see if I improve at it or not. Preparation. We really want to uh, draw a crowd. You'd be prepared. You'd have speeches made up. You'd say, we will speak today on a subject that has always garnered a great response for all of my engagements. Public speaking. Look at that. I'm doing it. And yet... I ordinarily pretty much get flop sweat when I try to do it otherwise. I was in Toastmasters, so I know this for a fact that I am poor at it. And of course what you're doing there is you're making, you're trying to make yourself better at it. And it's a challenge. It's, it's one of those things where you're supposed to be able I learned this one thing that you're supposed to have if someone here let me turn this off I forget I think to Naples is calling it run the room in other words someone that can get up and he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of church background and uh, how he would consider you know public speaking 
to have to get up and say, hey, everybody, you know, shake everybody's hand, move around, do that sort of stuff, <clears throat> uh, which is all good experience. Or doing things like uh, holding down a, a, a con table, being a salesman in general, you know, making a presentation of yourself, speaking. I've always wanted to be, uh, you know, take some sort of massive killer seminar that turned me into Paul Free somehow. The voice of uh, so much of what I grew up with as far as narration. George Powell loved his narration. He's in quite a few films. He was the guy in The Thing with the great sonorous voice that uh, is leaning in. He's one of the scientists that gave up the scientist that was trying to get them all killed in the thing <laughs> by feeding the uh, the two the uh, bulbs blood and everything. You know, you got to watch these scientists. You're you're more intelligent than we are. Understand me. Favorite film of almost everybody that grew up during that era. Big influence on God. How many people? John Carpenter. Everybody. Everybody that uh, got into genre filmmaking knows that movie. Probably inside and out. Probably seen it ten times. At least. At least ten times. I could watch it right now. See, this will be interesting to study where my see if my eye recognize that nope it's off how about that see if I rotate this to the right spot I can use the shift key this uh, this goes to picture hanging abilities close enough probably Let's see how well we do here yeah that's good enough better than I would have done Okay, now we're on. Uh, we aren't being monitored by the uh, by the hands of time. But that reminds me that I was oops halfway out the door when I heard that. So I will put this back where it belongs. Save it. And quit streaming. <laughs>